Hello and welcome back to this course of videos on MongoDB. Now if you cast through and back to the previous video, <coughs> you'll remember that we added seller information to our orders. However, instead of embedding our seller information within the orders array, we instead created a completely separate table. Now, we did this because um, if we had embedded seller information within our orders, if we wanted to update the seller tier, which is quite possible that we would want to update their tier and upgrade or downgrade the seller, we would have to iterate through many, many different objects here um, to make the updates uh, to seller tier in the various different places within our collection. So that's why we created a separate table. But um, what, we, what we're looking at now is what about when we need to run a query that spans across both tables? So for example, what if I wanted to know all of the customers that had ordered from a tier one seller? Perhaps we're concerned about our tier one sellers that they don't give a good experience to our customers. So we want to know who those customers are. So we can do this. And the reason that we can actually do this is because we have our within each order we have our seller ID here and this can be um, referred to really as a pro as a foreign key that isn't a term we use in NoSQL databases but on the MySQL side this would be called the foreign key and this is like the anchor that references if we go across the seller table this seller ID of two we can see that ID of two that this is a primary key on the seller table so on here it's the foreign key on here it's the primary key so we can tell that this particular order belongs to seller ID 2 and seller ID 2 is rich short tires and that is a tier 1 seller so you can see now if we wish to run this query of all of the customers that have ordered from a tier 1 seller the first thing we need to do is we need to do, run a, a query on uh, the sellers table of all the, the seller IDs that have a seller tier of tier one. So in my first criteria in my find uh, method is always the uh, the criteria that you wish to select. So which records you wish, which re records or sorry, which documents you wish to select. And I only wish to select the documents where the seller tier is tier one. This is my this is my first stage. So there we go. I only have one seller with a with a tier of tier one. However, I only actually want the um, ID field returned. I don't I don't need the other two fields returned. So any chance you get to minimize the number of fields that you retrieve from a document. The be it's best to use as little as possible because um, when data is stored and retrieved from Mongo, it has to uh, convert to BSON. It's called serialize to BSON. So the serializing and deserializing of data to or from JSON is quite time intensive. So we want to limit the, the fields that we pull as much as possible. So I'm going to use my, our second argument here, which is also an object. And I'm going to limit my uh, limit my fields that I'm returning just to IDs. I'm going to put my ID field and a one, and that now should limit me to just my ID. So that's the first stage of the query completed. We've extracted our ID of two. Now what I need to do is move across to the customers table, and I need to find all of the customers that have orders from a seller with an ID of two. So the way I'm going to do that is if you remember previously when we were drilling down into sub objects, um, we basically put the, it has, if you remember, it has to be in double quotes, first of all, and we're going to say orders dot and dot will, will mean within orders, what are we drilling into? And we want to drill in and see uh, seller ID. So I'm going to say orders dot seller 
ID and we want this seller ID to only be two. So we only want to find the customers where that where where the orders the the orders array contains um, a what a particular order where the seller ID is two. So if we just run this query here, we'll see that we have only one customer. So only one document has been returned here. And you can see that within this orders array, we do have one of the orders with the seller ID of two. Now, again, um, we don't need the whole document. As you said before, it's best to minimize the fields where possible to return. So I actually only want um, first name. I only want the first name and so I'm going to put a one for here and then I also want the uh, I call it do I call it second name last name first name and I want last name now if you remember as well this is going to return the ID to me as well so I don't want the ID so I have to also put a final um, argument in here and say underscore ID is zero and then I'm left with just my first and last name. So this is how you would query across two separate collections with MongoDB. Now on the MySQL side, the relational side, it is a very different story. Um, so first of all, on the um, SQL side for Mongo, we only had to query across two collections, if you remember our sellers and our customers collection. However, on the MySQL side, we have more tables at play. Um, because of the normalization, we have our customers table, we have our customer orders table, and we have our sellers table. So we have three tables as opposed to two collections. Now, the way we need to work in MySQL with relational databases is we need to join, create joins between these three tables. And we, we can see that from these, the uh, SQL we have here. So I'm selecting first and last name as similar to what we did on the NoSQL side. However, before I can select from my tables, I have to join all three tables together. So what I'm doing here is this, key, this keyword here, inner join, is what joins two tables together. So I'm joining the customers table with the customer orders table. And MySQL wants to know, how are you joining these two tables together? Now, if we look, what are the common fields between these two tables? If we look on customers, I have my ID, my primary key. And on customer orders, I have customer ID. So these match. So this, these are the two fields that I want to use to join my two tables together. So I go back to my SQL and you can see I join on. Um, so customers table ID field is equal to customer orders table customer ID field. So that's how I've joined these two tables together. And what it's done is that's created one big table from those two smaller tables by joining them together on the what we call the uh, primary and foreign key. Now, we have th these tables, but we also need to join in the sellers table. So we have this large table, which is a, the uh, consolidation of two tables. And then we join again with the sellers table. And the common field between this big table here with this big join table here and our sellers table is seller ID. Because you can see it on the customer orders table, we have our seller ID here, and on our sellers table, the primary key is the seller ID. So that is how we are joining our sellers table with this big table, which is a join of um, customers and customer orders. So now we have our big three table table uh, to query from, so we can take our first and last name, and we have our where statement. Um, which is selecting our criteria. Again, the where statement is equivalent to what we put in here, the first object we put in here in our find statement, which limits the uh, documents that are returned based on a particular criteria. So that's our where statement. 
and we only want to return the records where the seller tier in the sellers uh, table is tier one. So this one here, where it's ritual tires. So if I run this query here, you will see it returns um, one field, which is exactly the same as was returned from our NoSQL um, query. So you can see here, this is this is quite a different approach on the on the NoSQL side. We've actually done two separate queries. We we first of all queried from the seller table to get the ID of any sellers that are tier one, and then we used that to submit into a query from our customers table. Now that would be a two-step process. Now if you're writing that in a normal application, for example, let's say Node.js or any other program application, you would just use a variable. You would run this first query, store it in a variable, and then pass it to the second query. Um, however, as we saw on the relational side, it's quite different in the sense that you, it's, what, it's one big query that you run. It's not broken down into two separate ones because you can join these tables together with these uh, with this inner join keyword here so i hope this gives you a good insight into how to query databases across multiple tables or across multiple collections i look forward to seeing you in the next video